Hey there, and welcome to Pro Tools 101 Exercise 4. Um, this is the first of the tutorials I'm making for going through the Pro Tools eBooks, and the whole goal of these is to help guide you through the exercises. The exercises themselves are supposed to be pretty simple in the sense that everything you learn in the exercises <clears throat> is based off of the lesson or the chapter that you just read before that exercise. So in other words, all the basically tips to finish the exercise are usually in the preceding 15 to 20 pages that you read. However, the exercises are also very step-by-step. -step. So even if you don't read the chapters of the lessons, for the most part, not in all cases, but for the most part, you'll be able to figure out how to complete the exercise. So, but I'm gonna help you along because you know some folks, including myself, uh, prefer the visual version of how to do these things. So feel free to follow along. Okay, right now I am looking at the Pro Tools eBook exercise four. Uh, so this exercise is all about creating a session. So the first thing you'll want to do is right here it says downloading the media files. All these exercises require media files. The media files that Pro Tools provides me, which I then provided you. If you do not have these, please go to module zero on the Canvas page and go download them through the links I have up there. There's also a tutorial video in module zero about how to download the exercise media files. Okay, so once you have those, uh, let's just go through step by step. I'm gonna make this a little bigger so it's a little easier for you to view. There we go. Getting started. You'll need to open Pro Tools and create a new 44.1 kilohertz 24-bit session. Now remember, what is the standard for audio for cinema? 48 kilohertz 24-bit. Pro Tools does music as well as, uh, it works with both mu music as well as with video. So this is uh, probably just going to, to be a music session. Um, and it's also just to get you started. So don't take this 44.1 kilohertz thing to heart. We will be working it with 48 kilohertz exclusively through this class, except when the exercise tells us otherwise. So power up your computer, do one of the following, double click on Pro Tools. Um, I have done that right here. It's in my dock. I'm on a Mac, as you could tell. And the first thing you always see is the dashboard. So let's see what it says to do next. Um, it says if you have an Avid Master account with available cloud storage, you can create a project instead. So remember what the difference is between session and project. A project is something that you do in the Avid Pro Tools cloud with collaborators. That is a project. A session is a local um, project on your computer. So even though they're all projects, in the Pro Tools world, a project is a project in the cloud, and a session is a project that exists only on your computer. What we're gonna be doing in this class is exclusively sessions. We're not doing any of this cloud stuff. Okay, make sure create from template checkbox is not selected right here is what they're talking about. We're not gonna be working with templates in this class. Templates, in my opinion, are a more sort of advanced thing. When you start using Pro Tools more and more, you'll find that there are templates that are that Avid has made for you that will make um, working with Pro Tools sessions easier. Um, also, just like Microsoft Word or any other program, if you're doing this sort of the same sort of thing over and over again that requires like setups, like setting up tracks in a certain way, um, maybe you work with just mono files, things like that. Um, it might be easier just to make a template. That way, whenever you set up a Pro Tools session, you don't have to like go into your preferences and do all this stuff. So, but that's definitely more intermediate level. So in this class, we will never be working from templates. Okay, here we go. Specify the parameters at the bottom of the dashboard. 
set the parameters as follows file type bit depth sample rate input output settings okay so file type remember <clears throat> in this class we'll always be working with wave AIFF is the same audio quality as wave however the industry standard is wave therefore we stick with that so for those wondering BWF is sort of an updated acronym for wave it's called broadcast wave format they're the same thing the same thing the only difference is that BWF files let you input more metadata which is something we'll be talking about in a couple of weeks but just know that BWF is the same thing as wave it's just an updated acronym that's a little more accurate as to what a wave file actually is so over the coming years I have a feeling WAV is going to sort of dissipate and BWF is going to take its place even though it's the same thing bit depth uh, we always want this to be 24 the lower the bit depth the lower the quality the higher the bit depth the higher the quality yes but this is reserved mostly for music which deals with much more complex acoustic structures of the sound itself which is overkill for what we need in this class so we're not choosing the highest bit depth because it's more than what we need and why waste the hard drive space so 24 bit sample rate 44 is what they want for this particular project so I'll select that input output settings <clears throat> what's cool about Pro Tools it just remembers by default what you did the last time so this is something that you don't really ever have to mess with unless for some reason you want to enter into a whole different type of project in this class we're only going to be doing stereo mix sessions so our input output settings will be stereo mix but from here on out it's just going to be on last use because it's just the because once we set this here it'll remember the next time we opened what our last used was which is this and then interleaved we like to remain checked because we're going to be working with stereo files and we don't want to separate them into non interleaved mono left and mono right files we like to keep it as a single linked or interleaved stereo file and then last but not least <clears throat> I like having this set to prompt for location because um, this is just where is this going to be stored if there's a location that I always store these I could set this and this will be the default but if me I'm indecisive sometimes I like to save it here sometimes I'd like to save it there sometimes I like to save it there um, if you save it at a different spot every time or at least want the choice to save it to a different spot every time prompt for, for location then you hit create and I'm gonna name this uh, let's see what it says Pro Tools 101 FDC all right PT 101 FDC and there you go what we have here is a blank edit window remember there are two windows and you can access them through uh, the window menu well there's more than two windows obviously but the two main windows we'll be working with are the edit window and the mix window the mix window there's nothing in it now because there's no audio in here but when you have audio in here it starts to resemble a mixing board with like the faders and the pan knobs and that sort of thing but for the first part of class we're dealing just with the edit window so it says create track new uh, we're gonna create and name a track or two so go up to track down to new and note the shortcut uh, on max they are shift uh, shift uh, shift command N and in Windows that would be control shift N so that's a shortcut for creating a track and when you do that you're gonna see a window like this so let's go ahead and do that new there we go and let's see what it says to create mono audio track and we're gonna name it VO stereo audio track we're gonna actually create two new stereo audio tracks named music and create one new master fader track called master 
let's figure out how to do this. So, track, new, or the shortcut. So here we have, looks like we're going to create one new mono audio track. Okay, it's said to call that VO. Good, but how do I create new, new other tracks? Well, see this little plus key right here? Add row, boom. Create two stereo audio tracks. And what are we gonna call that again? Music. And we're going to hit, and we can always subtract this if we want by clicking that. And we could, um, looks like we can move it around. We only have two in here, so we can't really move it anywhere. Hit plus to add another one. We're gonna add one new stereo master fader. And it's gonna just by default be called master. And when we hit create, what you're gonna see is, you're gonna see a total of four rows or four tracks of blank, you know, blank tracks in Pro Tools. So hit create, boom. And there they are right there. VO, music one, music two, master one. So it says to rename them, uh, we're going to rename it as drums and guitar. So the best way to do this is this. These are what we call the nameplates. This is the nameplate that says VO, nameplate that says music one, and so on and so on. So I want this one to be called drums. I double click on it, a dialog window pops up, and I could just type in drums. Okay, this one pops up guitar. This one, I like master, but I'm going to take out the one. So now I have renamed my tracks. Another thing that's interesting is when you move your mouse to the bottom edge of each track, you'll see a little up down arrow that lets you expand the track. So if you click, hold and drag it, that'll make the track bigger. I suggest you do that for all of these tracks because as you add music, you'll understand why. It's when it's super compressed like that, you can't really see what's going on. So again, that's right there. Okay, so setting display options. We're gonna set the main time scale, sub time scale, and other display options. So Pro Tools is used for music. It's also used for cinema. So what you wanna do is, <clears throat> Choose view, main counter, bars, beats to set the main time scale. And you can also click the down arrow next to the counter to change the time scale. I'll show you guys what I mean. So view, let's see here. View, main counter, this is your main counter right here. I'm going to change that to bars and beats and watch what happens to this. It just changed it to this is how a bars and beats counter look looks. I can also just click on this arrow right here if I don't want to go up to view down to main counter. I could just click on the arrow right here and choose what I want the counter to be. Minutes and seconds, time code, feet and frames samples or bars and beats. In this case, it wants us to do bars and beats. Now, it says that the sub counter is not already displayed. Click the down arrow next to the main counter and select show sub counter. Okay, I'll do that. Show sub counter, what is that? It's just another counter. Now there are two. Why is this uh, helpful? Well, especially in cinema, it's helpful. What I like to do is I like to have it the, my main counter be on time code and my sub counter be on minutes and seconds. Because a lot of time, whenever we get notes, we usually get notes in time code saying, hey, at the five second, two frame mark, I want a gunshot sound or something like that. But then when you're working on the project, you want to see how long it is. You're like, I'm at the 30 minute mark, I'm at the 60 minute mark, whatever the case may be. 
When you have two counters up here, you'll be able to work with the time code notes that you get, and you also get to see how far along you are in the movie as a whole. So we're doing bars and beats because that's what they say they want. And have the sub counter <clears throat> set to minutes and seconds. Minutes and seconds, boom. And again, you could do this up here. However, it's just easier to do it in the, in the pop-up menu next to the counter itself. And by the way, this right here is called the transport window. This section right here is called your transport window because traditionally in editing st or recording studios, these are called transport controls. Play, stop, record, rewind, forward. That's all part of the transport. You are transporting the tape from the beginning to the end. This is digital, but we still use a lot of the same terminology. Okay, <clears throat> display the side columns, track list and clip list. If needed, click the arrow icons in the bottom corners of the edit window to display the edit side columns. See this right here? Super tiny. You might have to get in your reading glasses for this. This is our edit window. This right here is our timeline. This right here says tracks, and this right here says clips. When we bring in clips, this is our clip window, kind of like a bin window in Premiere, right? All of our clips reside in here. We drag and drop them one by one into our timeline. These show what tracks we've created. VO, drums, guitar, and master. As you can see, here they are right here. A lot of times you'll want to select a specific track. You see when I click on the name plate, look what happens under the tracks window. See that? It highlights the different tracks. Later on in the semester, we're going to be doing stuff, and it's easier if you can affect multiple tracks at once. So you can do that by, in the tracks window itself, shift selecting the tracks that you want. You can also do that here, obviously, but sometimes it's easier to do it in the tracks window. But back to the book here. The book says that there's a little arrow right here, and there's a little arrow right here. Watch what happens when I click on this arrow. Look at what happens to the clip window. It disappears. Look what happens when I click on this arrow. The track window disappears. But what's the advantage? I get more real estate. I get more space for my editing timeline. We've all worked with like small monitors and a bunch of windows that are open. <clears throat> Pro Tools makes it very easy for you to open and close these track and clip windows when you need to see more of your timeline and that's these tiny little arrow keys right here okay so now we do a save as to complete this exercise tutorial you need to save your work under a new name so we are going to call this exercise 4-xxx where xxx is your initials Great, and we're going to keep this in the exercise media folder. So, save as, make sure I'm in the exercise media folder, and actually I'm in the session. So I'm going to call this exercise 04-KT, save, boom, and then when you finish that, uh, what I want you to do to get the grade for this is to take a screenshot with your, with your phone or if you know how to do that on your computer. Take a screenshot and do it on the Mac of your Pro Tools window. Email that to me and that's evidence that you finished the exercise. So do this for every single exercise that you complete. Okay, there it is. Exercise 4.